not a student who comes on the contest list. And that's a geometric sequence because that's going to be using a common difference. Another student, a little rudely, comes on and says, no, no, no. And so you have to use the A1. See how that demands that you to apply. The A1 uses the one that's your, different. Uh, in your particular situation that you're using math as all the time. But I don't mean like and a workshop. So I was I'm actually a in your life. Where's all my money going? What you know, that kind of thing. Was. No, they, 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 you have to be able to. Yeah, if you don't know. Near like, hey, uh, one exactly what uses one specifically uses the other. You're not going to size. You're going to figure out. Right. No, they don't have any money left at the end of the month. So, I mean, that's just one example, and that's only an arithmetic example, but there's two other explain it like, like in the real world. That's what I'm first job. I had and, and you know what? They asked me like, to uh, insurance come up with a way for them to tell you. Insurance is so very careful because it's this huge time. It affects the rest of the city. You understand that as much as we teach you, much as we are the teachers. But in certain students get a lot from that their peers. Like, it might take a while for so them to get something from me, but they get, if somebody's like, hey, uh, like, I gave them a stick, yeah, like, stick they get down there and get this many inches. So, so I'm happy to be able to but use the word relative. Because I, 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 I know, I know sometimes. I understand that that can be done. Where but you I might choose them. Somebody might also do something. Struck me. Damn, one, and I used geometry, so I did. Now, because it was more accurate. Certain kids are looking at us, right? Because they do it a lot. You know what I mean? They around each other like a lot. What was that? So, but that's what I'm going to use for my mediation activity. I'm going to present questions. Oh yeah, that's real world math to anybody right there. Ask two questions. But they cannot ask what's the correct answer. Things right? things like, uh, how much paint but do I need I'm to just going to use redirect things like, you've got to say, all right, this person asked this question, but you're going to answer it for that. Yeah. But why yeah. you yeah. Or not enough. For them to be precise. Be precise. Right. Because, in my opinion, if, if a student is not precise in what they're asking, they'll be jumbled in their own. It's kind of like when you brought up that person blurts out something. When you build a gun to, well, that person saying that, perhaps that's the way to do it. And that even doesn't mean that you're going to be precise. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Man. You don't want to end up confused. with like 50 extra two by fours. Hello. <laughs> beyond that, when it comes to the assessment, the assessment uses precise language, so Room. you have That's to true. be able to, oh, to incorporate all kinds. Of, you know, all kinds. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To understand a problem, you got to be able to. All right, I heard that. some uh, good conversation. Who wants to go ahead and answer that question? All right, go ahead, Miss Lair. <laughs> Based on what you and Mr. Hart discussed, how can ensuring that students are careful and precise lead to solidifying students' mathematical reasoning? Well, the first thing was, I thought about was, you know, they must, they need to know the key, key vocabulary. Okay. That's, in, that's, okay. that's a gimme. You need to know that in order to, if you wanted to, your, um, when you're working it out, that your answer is going to be correct. Okay. And precise. Okay. That's so knowing the key vocabulary. Mm -hmm. All right. And I heard Mr. Gadsden saying when you have students discussing with each other, that gives you more leverage as a teacher. So everybody's not waiting on you to use the correct and precise mathematical language. Now, Mr. Shabazz is using it with me, and now that presses me to use the language with him. And we have to communicate. Go and, ahead. And that's major, like, because, like, it's an extension of, you know, because we can, we know our higher level students we, that we're getting to. We know those. And we know that we're using certain things with them that's still intriguing them and getting them. But if they can use what they have to somebody else that we are might have struggled with, then that kind of benefits. But we have to make sure that, like, like, like the the slides are presenting, is that we get them trained in using the right thing because we do, then do not want them to be misdirected by somebody else. Because, because, and another thing is like, I know we have this too, we have our stronger students that might rush to certain things mm -hmm. and they might embark on another student and it's like, hold on though, you gotta be exact. Right. Because if you're not, if you, okay, we understand that you can get to the right answer, but sometimes it's not about getting to the right, it's like, what does the question ask you? Right. Because you might see the question, might be the same thing, but the wording might be different and you not know. And you can't just say, "Oh, I saw that from last time," and I think that's where we—that's where the hang-up is with some of our students. So, yeah. right. 
Right, so you got to be careful and precise uh, to solidify that understanding. All right, so here's court action 3E. So we have teacher actions and we have student actions. Teacher actions and student actions. So the teacher connects and develops students' informal language and mathematical ideas to precise mathematical language and ideas. The teacher connects and develops students' informal language and mathematical ideas to precise. So now I'm moving from the number on top to now saying the numerator. Right. You know, or the one on the side to the y-axis. Uh, students use increasingly precise mathematical language and ideas. Students use increasingly precise mathematical language and ideas. All right, so what we're going to do is put up some examples and non-examples of what this looks like in practice uh, for teacher moves and student moves. So I give you the when you say not examples, do you mean like bad examples? No, what students, what, what uh, students or teachers should not do? Should not do. Okay. So, if I say, if you ask me a question, so just using that same example, mm -hmm. that, so you, you ask me for the answer and I say, all right, Ms. Kreitlein, the number on top is going to be three and the number on the bottom is seven. So do you allow me to say that or how do you? I'll be more specific. I have to right. be more specific. And so that specificity should have come from the teacher model and possibly from you redirecting me because we've already talked about this language or this terminology specifically. All right, you know, so that's the area we want to move. So what would be a non-example of students using math precisely? And then what would be a good example of students using math precisely in a general term because we have to apply this to all. So let's put none example. Non examples here. And then and then examples here. I'm gonna let Mr. Guess since he got up, he's gonna lead it. So, so yeah, questions you want to ask colleagues? Let's, 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 work, let's work with the, uh, the pros. So, an example, let's, uh, you want to start with the teachers or or it just doesn't matter, like, okay. Uh, Teacher and student, however you want to do it. Okay. Making sure teachers' word play does not confuse the students. Uh, so, modeling... Say teachers use, we use precise language when instructing, instructing students. So as Mr. Hart uh, used the example of instead of keep change flip, they're using the word reciprocal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they understand that the reciprocal is when you, when you essentially, right, you change your numerator from denominator. So, so let's move to the other side, other side with a non-example. So what would be the inverse of that one then? Uh, so if teachers are using precise language <laughs> when instructing yeah, students, yeah, yeah. Oh, so like you that would be slang. Uh, uh, using uh, math slang. Like oh, what is, what is parenting the, what the words slang. that students are using because you know that they right. already know that. Oh, okay. And so, so. That you're, so you're actually just adopting the student language okay. just to get a point across. Okay. I like that. Okay. Math like slang. slang. Okay. <laughs> using okay. math okay. slang. Uh, 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 adoption. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but that's uh, an entry slang. point. You can look at it as an entry point as long as you go. That's good. Push them further. That's good. say, hey, if you want to say, if you want to think, Flip and change the sign. Uh, think of it that way, but mm -hmm. you know, go ahead and use the word negative reciprocal. Adoption, you know, which and understand over, that means the same thing. Over correct terminology. Yeah. So possibly maybe adoption of student language, 
Let's do some math, let's put math slang. Because, and, and as you, and that would be like, 